Very good. Um, I think we need a roll call on the minutes. Oh, well, we need a motion to approve. Motion to approve the minutes. Second. 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 And the roll call. Chairman Morris? Aye. Alderman Karras? Aye. Alderman Rummel? Here. Alderman Notes? Aye. Alderman Freshlack? Aye. Here. Alderman Gasparian? Aye. Alderman Bushman? Aye. Alderman Weber? Aye. A vote of 8 to 0. Minutes are approved. Thank you very much. Uh, the next item is a introductory discussion about the comprehensive fiscal plan for the city for fiscal year 2023. And this will be Director Holla uh, making this, uh, dis leading this discussion. It'll be a relatively brief one because we'll, in the city council meeting tonight, we'll have a more in depth presentation on it. So, Director? Yep, thank you. This is really just the final <coughs> finance committee check in on the draft comprehensive fiscal plan for fiscal year 23. Um, the city council will be asked to consider approval of that document as part of your city council agenda this evening. Um, just as a follow up from the last discussion, March 14th. Um, staff has gone back since March 14th and reviewed all the FY22 year in estimates, both revenue and expenses, so those have been updated in the budget book, um, as well as the compensation adjustment approved by the committee on March 14th has now been allocated to all the individual operating budgets um, throughout the general fund, so all of those uh, compensation changes are reflected in each individual department and division budget. We made a few minor revisions to the CIP, but most of that was just movement between years, no significant amount changes. Um, and so we did publish the budget book on Monday, April 11th. It has been available on the website since that date and of course available to the Finance Committee for review. Um, so as Chairman Morris indicated, we'll do a formal presentation this evening at the City Council agenda, but I'd be happy to answer any questions you have at this time. Questions from the committee? There being none. Again, you'll have a, uh, Alderman Bushman. I, I don't know whether it's appropriate here at the finance <coughs> committee or at our main meeting, but we do have a supplemental appropriation in connection with the right-hand turn lane at uh, Waukegan and Everett. Uh, and uh, I just wanted to make a comment, although I don't see Mike Thomas here to direct the comment more to him, that as part of that continuing effort to improve that intersection, sure. including with the right turn lane, that I encourage the city to continue to look at the possibility of reconfiguring uh, the intersection that may be just so slightly like three feet that would uh, relieve, uh, reduce the impact of the uh, need for uh, acquiring property uh, to the, at the uh, northeast side. So uh, again, not, I'm not the engineer, I don't know the answers, but uh, I hope we continue to look at that possibility mm -hmm. Uh, so that uh, we have an intersection that uh, works for everyone well. Sure, and, and feel free to bring it up again. That'll be that'll be fine. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions or comments? If not, I'd like a motion to approve the comprehensive plan for fiscal year 2023. So moved. Second. Director Halab, I mean, uh, Chairman call Morris. Vote. Aye. Alderman Karras? Aye. Alderman Rummel? Aye. Alderman Notes? Aye. Alderman Preschlack? Aye. Alderman Gashgarian? Aye. Alderman Bushman? Aye. Alderman Weber? Aye. By vote of 8 to 0, that motion is approved. Very good. Thank you. <clears throat> the next one again will be Director Holub talking about the supplemental appropriation ordinance from fiscal year 22. Certainly. Uh, this <coughs> item is also included on your city council agenda this evening for consideration. Should you choose, you could waive first reading and grant final approval or grant first reading to the supplemental appropriation ordinance for fiscal year 22. As part of the fiscal year 23 budget development, we ask operating departments to provide information on where they think their expenditures are going to end up um, at the end of the year compared to their budget. This gives us the information needed to, to assess whether or not any single fund of the city might exceed its appropriation approved by the city council last July. So we did have one item, and Alderman Bushman is a step ahead of us this evening, but um, the one <laughs> supplemental appropriation ordinance <coughs> item does relate to the Waukegan Everett intersection, um, and that is in the motor fuel tax fund where those design costs are being charged. So based on a change in the scope of the design services approved by the City Council last summer, 
Um, we knew that that item would potentially go over budget and perhaps uh, necessitate a supplemental appropriation, which it does. Um, so that was expanded the scope of the base design as well as adding the westbound right-hand turn lane to the design contract um, with the engineering firm. So that was anticipated at the time, again, to potentially result in a supplemental appropriation ordinance of 150000 uh, and that appropriation ordinance will be on your agenda this evening for city council approval. Be happy to answer any questions on that. And <coughs> Alderman Fishman, I will make note and pass along your comments to Director Thomas. Any questions on that? Well, thank you, Alderman Bushman. Uh, I'd like a motion to approve the supplemental appropriation ordinance for fiscal 22, 2022. So moved. Second. You got. Somebody second it? Second. There we go. All right. A um, roll call vote. All right. Chair Chairman Morris? Aye. Alderman Karras? Aye. Alderman Rummel? Aye. Alderman Notes? Aye. Alderman Preschlack? Aye. Alderman Gashgarian? Aye. Alderman Bushman? Aye. Alderman Weber? Aye. Again, by a vote of 8 0, that motion is approved. Thank you. Very good. Uh, we'd like to continue with the motor fuel tax fund, the $150,000. Um, uh, Director Holland, do you want to? Talk about that. You're actually okay. That's the supplemental appropriation. That's ordinance. part of that. Okay. okay. Um, we're moving right along. So the next year is the fi next item is a five-year long-range technology plan, and we're going to have a presentation by Director Shaw. So welcome. Good evening, Mr. Chairman <coughs> and members of the Finance Committee. I believe a copy of the long-range technology plan has been included in your packet. Uh, and while we won't be reviewing the plan directly tonight, we will discuss the purpose and what it represents. So our intent of the plan was to provide the council and interested parties a high level understanding of what we're looking at in terms of technology, specifically what the departments are interested in as far as solutions, benefits, and timetables. I'd like to say it's not your typical plan. We're providing a lot of details regarding proposed projects. We include well-defined project as, as well as concepts or areas of focus which need further definition. Now building a plan, building a technology plan is a difficult proposition. The landscape is ever-changing. Uh, timelines, priority, solution will change. So flexibility is the key. This is why we consider this document or this plan a working document. And I'll explain that in that we try to meet with our departments two to three times a year. We discuss IT service, we discuss, discuss chronic issues, and we discuss projects. And those meetings provide the source for this plan. Now, they're very much considered a team effort. We don't dictate to the department. We work together to find and formulate their individual IT plan. Now, in IT, we have identified four key guidelines or benefits that we're seeking when we associate a project into the plan. Improvement of citizen experience, operational efficiencies, environmental sustainability, or security and safety. And a project must have or fulfill at least one of those benefits to have value. <coughs> Now we also, as added information in the plan, we've classified the projects to include elements which would be understood as, as current industry trends. So cloud computing, software as a service, remote work, internet of things, mobile applications, and real-time analytics. Now one thing I'd wanna say here, and maybe provide a definition, we always hear a lot about Internet of Things. It means a lot of, of things. There's a lot of definitions out there. To us, I guess you could say that we understand that our environment today has a lot of embedded computing devices, sensors, and cameras. And if we can incorporate those devices and bring them into a system, provide data or imagery, it can be very useful. Now, in looking at the department summaries, we tried to include for each department two visualizations that kind of provide a high-level understanding 
as well as a matrix which lists all their projects. Okay, when we look at the two visualizations, they're considered, they're, they're charts of quadrants. And this is typical of maybe something Gartner would put out. But in the first, we had the typical calendar timeline with the vertical, with the vertical axis being relative cost. For the, for the second, we show the operational efficiencies versus the citizen interaction. The values are increasing from bottom to top and from left to right. Now we also, I want to explain the matrix, explain some of the definitions around that. We've included industry trends, which we've talked about before. We've included our principles or, or benefits. We've also included a fairly broad cost estimate or cost approximation. And I think the last thing, which, which may be the most important, we have a column dedicated to the completeness of vision. So this, this, these projects have a wide scope, a very broad scope of definition. Some are fully defined in that we understand the system, we understand our goals, our benefits, and our timetable. Others are simply a concept or an area of focus that the department's interested in. But we wanted to include those. We think those are very important. Those will develop into fully understood systems quite possibly. Now, we've also received some feedback, and I think what we're going to try to do with this matrix going forward is also add some type of value index. So you can think of it as being return on investment, or you can think of it as having certain values that maybe aren't necessarily dollar denominated. But we'll try to do that in the future and add that as a component. Now, the, the plan carries roughly 85 projects. And what we would like the committee to do is to give it a, a review and feel free to respond with any questions regarding the projects or feel free to respond with ideas around the format. We want to hear from you and get your feedback. Okay. Are there any questions regarding the plan or? Uh, Alderman Fresh. Yeah, hi. Uh, first of all, thanks a lot for doing this. You know, it's, it's, um, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of cross-functional work across departments. And I know there's a small staff within the IT group and, you know, it's a shared model, so appreciate it. And, uh, you know, I think it's just, it's very helpful because businesses do it and not a lot of cities or villages do it. I'm just kind of curious how long it took to kind of put it together and what steps are meetings? How did you, how did you work and interact with the departments? So we have our, we have routine department meetings. So that was a natural and, and we thought taking the, the output from those meetings and documenting it and presenting it as the plan would give people a better understanding of what we're looking at in the future. So in the audience, we have an IT analyst by the name of Cam Burrell, and Cam maintains the project database. And he does, he, he put the plan together as far as format, and it was a lot of work. But uh, it was, I think it was well worth it, and we appreciate him and his efforts. Yeah. The, the other comment I have is that a lot of times these plans are shelfware at companies. You know, they don't really do anything, and I, they're, they're aspirational, but... I really appreciate that this is action oriented in terms of what's going to be done when and how will department benefit or or the city in terms of its citizens benefit. So it seems like it's very action oriented. So I was just wondering how it feeds into the capital budgeting process. Well, and we'll bring it to our next department meetings when we start talking about projects. It'll be the source or the starting point for that discussion, right? And as we finalize development plans or plans for implementation then those systems will go into the capital budget, okay? So it, it's a process, but mm -hmm. that'll feed into the budget. Terrific, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Questions, comments? I, I had a comment. As, as chairman of the Finance Committee, uh, Director, we've talked many times about security, and every day you read about another city's infrastructure was compromised and, and ransomed and, and um, I think you're making good headway. Uh, I just encourage you to keep going. <laughs> the good. harder to break in, the better. Yes. Right. Okay. And, and to that point, okay, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Go ahead. 
to that point, we do have a few department updates I want to try to present if I have a few minutes. Oh, sure, but you have a question? First? Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Jim. My only question is, the uh, are these different programs or, or applications off the shelf? Are they being customized? They vary. So some will be customized in-house, others will be off the shelf. Um, some will be software as a service where we would simply buy a subscription. So they vary greatly. Right. Any comments you wanted to make? Yeah, we have a few things I wanted to try to touch base on. First, um, I want to talk about the mobile application, give you a, a brief update. It's been live now for 14 months. We have over 3,000 unique downloads, which is very impressive, I think. Uh, we have what we would consider 1,400 routine users, okay? Now, we've noticed a seasonal effect with this application. When it gets warm, people use it. When it's cold, <laughs> the number of hits go down. But typically, in the wintertime, we can see 100 to 150, and in the summertime, three to 400 a day as far as selections on that app, okay? This year, we're gonna try to do a few things with the app. We're gonna try to do some uh, updates around the notification process. And we're also gonna do a refresh as far as the look and feel. Okay, just a few more. Mm -hmm. Sure, that's good. We have a, another project with a sailing venue in that we're installing an automated sailing gate for access to the venue, okay? Now this will provide 24 seven access. It utilizes license plate reader technology. So as a member's car will approach the gate, it will read the front plate and the gate will open, okay? There'll also be provisions for, for one day access uh, public safety will have their special provision as well, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, the bad news is we are somewhat on hold in this project. We have a supply chain issue with one component. Mm -hmm. We're 90% there, and we're hoping any day that we receive that component. Mm -hmm. Next item we have is a little project. It's an evaluation project. We're looking at automated sports cameras, okay? So... We're evaluating this as a possible amenity to the field upgrades. We're utilizing Forest Park or Everett Park baseball as our site, okay? And the, te the technology is that these cameras will automatically follow the play. <laughs> They'll broadcast the game live. Also, we'll make it available on, on demand. So I think this will be a big hit with the parents, the grandparents, the families even the kids playing the game where they can watch themselves. Right. Right. So that'll be a fun one. We hope to have that one in place by next weekend. Oh, so wow. right. we missed opening day. I'm not sure if they played Saturday, but we, uh, we will be ready for the weekend, we hope. Director Shaw, yes. where will that be viewed? On the YouTube channel, Enjoy Lake Forest, or on the website? The app will provide it, but from the app, you'll be able to denote what the final destination is. We're playing okay. with a couple of different targets right now, mm -hmm. YouTube being one of them. Okay, thank you. May I have a, I have a question about the gate? Yes. Um, have we thought about implementing that at the North Beach Access Road so, or something similar to it? Um, we certainly could. I mean, that's an option we could look at. Um, we have the license plate database, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's something we can certainly look at. And there's some other venues in town that we're considering, but I think let's get this in and let's see how well it works and make sure the technology is 100%. We're not reinventing the wheel here. This has been done in a number of other places with license plate readers. So I think it will be successful, but that's not a bad idea to take a look at that and maybe uh, use that as an access control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. it yeah. seems to me that that would, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, solve a lot of problems there for, um, the, yeah, for, the, the, for the guards yeah. the guards have to deal with yeah. that's a good point yeah, yeah. I would encourage it <laughs> one last item and that's security so chairman you mentioned security we just want to let you know that we are currently we're rolling out multi-factor authentication okay this is a significant uh, element for our network security uh, we're 65 percent to the way to completion and members of the council should be notified within the next 30 days or so because you're going to be a part of this as well. So. You might explain how it works. Well, it uses the second credential. And I think many of you have experienced this with your other accounts or financial transactions. You'll have your password, and then perhaps you'll have a text on your phone. So it's similar to that. There are some other options around it, but that's the basis. Very good. Okay. Great. Any questions or? 
Questions from the committee? Will you have an opportunity to opt out on a certain save device from the multi-factor authentication? That's a That's good a question for Mr. Gabanski. He's shaking his head yes. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Okay. So assuming you register once you're ready for that device and identify it mm -hmm. as a device that you're willing you, you to own. be accepted in. Excellent. Okay. All right. Great. Thank, Thank you, you very much. We we'll look forward to uh, a productive year. Yes, it'll be fun. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. That brings us down to other business. Then there are four items that are listed there. The flash report, the investment policy review, the purchasing policy review, and the pension consolidation <coughs> update. Any questions from the members on those four items? If not, we'll move on to the public and the opportunity for the public to address the finance committee. I don't know if anyone is out there that would like to make a statement or ask a question. Apparently not. So thank you. Uh, we'll move on to adjourning. Um, unless there's any comments from the committee, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those not? I guess we pass. We're adjourned. Thank you very much. We'll take a few, just a couple minutes before we start the city council meeting. So we have a couple people we need to introduce. So we want to make sure they're here. So why don't we start in four minutes? Four minutes. <laughs>